The story of hockey video games brings us all the way back to the 1970s. For a short while, arcade machines were all the rage. Kids would walk down the street, quarters in hand, ready to take on this week's challenge. It took until 1972 before video games were introduced into the home with the Magnavox Odyssey. The console was great as it allowed families to play their games in the comfort of their own homes. This was known as the first generation of video game consoles, and with it came the first ever hockey video game, Hockey. The electronic game of the future. Odyssey easily attaches to any brand TV, black and white or color, to create a closed circuit electronic playground. Odyssey gives you all the exciting action of hockey and 11 other challenging play and learning games for the entire family. Two players use paddles to knock a ball back and forth on the screen. It uses an overlay of a hockey rink placed on the screen, and players score only if the puck reaches the opponent's goal on the overlay. It was the forefather to the video game market we know today, but truly was just a copy of Pong. In 1976, the Fairchild Channel F was released with the second ever hockey video game pre-installed. The game was just called Hockey, and it was... simple. There were four paddles, two for each team. One paddle represented the goalie, while the other represented the player. Like I said, the game was very simple, just being another derivative of Pong in the end. The next important game to talk about is the 1980s NHL Hockey, created by Mattel Electronics and released for the Intellivision. There were more players on the ice, and this was the first hockey game to get licensing rights from the NHL. No players were featured, but it works for what it is. Now something interesting I discovered while researching this video was how many big name video game companies published hockey games at one point. Starting with Activision, who you know for the Call of Duty franchise, published Ice Hockey for the Atari 2600. And Capcom, best known for Street Fighter, published Hat Trick for the Arcade, Atari 7800, and Commodore 64. I think a really important name to the hockey video game scene is Sega. And right now they won't seem so important, but you just wait and see. In 1986, Sega published Great Ice Hockey for the Sega Master System. In many cases, when NHL wasn't licensed for use, they would use different countries to represent teams, and this game was no exception. One other game I want to quickly talk about is Wayne Gretzky Hockey, because it was published by Bethesda Softworks. You know, the people who would go on to publish the Elder Scroll games in Fallout? This was their first ever game. One last early predecessor to the hockey video game was Nintendo's Ice Hockey. The game was developed by Nintendo's R&D 4 and Nintendo R&D 2. The easiest way for you to understand who these guys were? They made your childhood. The game, just like many others, played with a horizontal view. But that's a great segue to the next part of the video. In 1991, EA Sports released the smash hit NHL Hockey, or in some parts of the world, EA Hockey. This was one of the first hockey games to incorporate a vertical layout over the heavily favored horizontal layout. The teams included every single franchise alive at the time. I'm talking North Stars. I'm talking Nordiques. It was a revolutionary sports game and won a lot of awards because of it. There were penalties, there was fighting, and it didn't matter it was 2D. It still got the job done in a great way. Glenn Healy, who was the goaltender for the Los Angeles Kings, was featured on the cover. The next EA release was NHL PA Hockey 93. Although it's considered to be the second EA Sports NHL game, the game was not licensed by the NHL. However, it did receive licensing permission from the NHL PA. Because of this, all teams are referred to only by city, and no use of a team name itself. The game features a single game exhibition mode and a playoff mode where the winner collects a trophy similar to the Stanley Cup. I like to pretend it's called the George Cup. The game includes mostly complete rosters of all 24 teams from the 1991-1992 NHL season, including the expansion Tampa Bay Lightning and Ottawa Senators. After NHL PA 93 was NHL 94 released in 1993 for the Genesis, Super NES, and Sega CD, as well as the first release for the PC. The game is officially licensed by the National Hockey League and the NHL Players Association. The game maintained the series' signature vertical camera angle, which offered the players distinct gameplay and strategic advantages over the contemporary side-view hockey games. Many improvements were made to the game's engine by EA between 1992 and 1993. Notably, NHL 94 introduced the one-timer. NHL 94's one-timer was so devastating that it would become the scoring method of choice for most players. Because of NHL 94's more realistic and action-packed gameplay compared to 93, the game is almost universally considered the best hockey game of its generation, and is frequently mentioned in all-time top sports game lists. NHL 94 also added the ability to save records and has four modes, Exhibition Game, Playoff, Best of Seven Playoffs, and Shootout. There are no international teams, but both all-star teams are represented. Also introduced were team-specific organ songs played at the start of periods and after goals. 
Examples included the Hartford Whalers trademark Brass Bonanza, when the Saints go marching in for St. Louis, and even Birthday by the Beatles. This was the start of NHL's epic soundtrack. The feature covered Rod Brindamore, Mike Richter, and Randy Mahler. NHL 95 was a lot of the same, with upgraded graphics, updated lines, and a more streamlined gameplay experience. NHL 96 was the first EA Sports game to feature virtual stadium technology, which resulted in a 3D feel and multiple camera angles. Many game options can be toggled, and fighting was brought back as another option, as are penalties and offsides. The control system makes it possible to execute one-touch passes and several special trick moves to quickly advance the puck. As a bonus feature, it included hockey card profiles of every player on CD, and interviews with the stars of the game. NHL 97 uses a full 3D engine with motion-captured polygonal players. Each goaltender has their own custom-painted mask, and the original artwork can be seen inside the game with a special goalie mask viewer. NHL 97 also introduced play-by-play -play commentary provided by well-known announcer Jim Hewson. By Brown, Brown hits Hunger, shot by Zettel, saved, did it, carries the puck to Kron. For the first time since EA Hockey, national teams were added, but only Canada, United States, and Russia have their own teams, while the other two are selections of the best European players. NHL 97 introduced a skill competition, allowing users to pick players to compete in drills such as hardest shot and accuracy shooting. This was the first year of the alternate jersey, or the third jersey. Teams that have a third jersey for NHL 97 are the Mighty Ducks, the Boston Bruins, the Los Angeles Kings, the Pittsburgh Penguins, and the Vancouver Canucks. These were the first teams to try out the alternate jersey. In addition, each team in the game had one player with a special skill. Examples are Joe Sackick's wrong-footed wrist shot, and Rob Bray's ability to check the opposing player while still controlling the puck. The cover of the game features goaltender John Van Beesbrook, who played for the Florida Panthers. NHL 97 was the most recent game of the NHL series to feature a goaltender on the cover until Martin Brodeur was chosen for the cover of NHL 14. Not much was different between NHL 97 and 98. NHL 98 took the series ahead by introducing full national teams. Jim Houston returned for the play-by-play, -play, this time joined by Dale Ray, who provided color commentary. During the planning stages of development, EA Sports consulted with Mark Crawford, the then coach of the Stanley Cup winning Colorado Avalanche, on how to improve the realism and strategy of the gameplay. The game cover featured Peter Forsberg. NHL 99 was released in September of 1998. The game boasted great improvements to the format from NHL 98. However, the next two editions featured small improvements from this game, thus making the game similar to NHL 2000 and 2001. It was also the first and only installment of the NHL series to be released on the N64. NHL 2000 introduced a season mode, later developed into a franchise mode, with a retirement feature, drafting, and player trades. You also had the ability to use any photo for created players' faces, which was textured onto the head. Dale Ray left the series as color commentator in this game and was replaced by Bill Clement. Jim Houston remained as the play by play announcer throughout the series. Now, when I mentioned that Sega was important to the story, I wasn't lying. In 1999, Sega released NHL 2K, a series which would go on to heavily compete with the NHL series of video games. The NHL 2K series was featured on the Sega Dreamcast on February 7, 2000, as part of an exclusive lineup of Sega Sports titles. Its success led to it becoming one of the few Sega All-Star titles. A year later, the developers did not release NHL 2K1, and instead opted to take a break to focus on the follow-up, NHL 2K2. NHL 2K2 was the last game released in North America for all Sega Dreamcasts when the system was discontinued. NHL 2K3 was released on the Xbox, PlayStation 2, and Nintendo GameCube. It was the first in the series to feature a franchise mode, and the Xbox version was the first online console hockey game. It had many improvements over its predecessor. Although players complained the goalies were too hard to score on, it addressed some issues like scoring and presentation, and was acknowledged as an exceptional sports title. I think the best thing for the story is skipping to NHL 2004. The game included many improvements to its gameplay, like a more realistic puck and rebound control and better checking and more game modes, like a completely reworked franchise mode renamed Dynasty. In addition to the gameplay improvements, one particular non-gameplay improvement was added. When the team wins the Stanley Cup Final, a large-scale celebration ensues. It included players skating around the ice holding the cup over their head. 
This then led to a common snapshot of the team and coaches that holds true to the NHL. Because of all of these additions, it was praised as the best game in the series to date. Even with the lockout looming, video game fans didn't have to worry about the series being put on hiatus, as ESPN Hockey 2K5 was released on August 30th, 2004. Because Sega had signed a deal with Take-Two Interactive to distribute and publish all titles in Sega's ESPN franchise, ESPN NHL 2K5 was priced at $19.99 on the day it shipped, versus the typical new release of $49.99. It earned a wide audience among more casual hockey fans on the PlayStation 2 and Xbox. However, EA soon signed an agreement with ESPN to become the sole license of ESPN brands and sports games on all platforms. You know, just doing what EA does best. NHL 07 for the Xbox 360 features analog stick controls and a brand new physics system which eliminates the magnetic type possession of the puck which had been used in the past NHL games. This system was called the skill stick. Instead of using buttons to shoot the puck, the left analog stick acted as the player, and the right analog stick acted as the player's hockey stick. If you flick the stick forward, you take a simple shot at the net. If you pull the stick back and then forward, you'll perform a slap shot. This control style was later brought over to NHL 08 for all consoles, not just the Xbox 360. A dynasty mode was added, which allowed players to create a dream team and play through to the Stanley Cup. However, there was no fantasy draft on the current generation version of the game, i.e. the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, only the PC and PlayStation 2 versions. The game also featured the then 29 teams of the American Hockey League. Players can develop their talent through the AHL and then call up their prospects to play in the NHL. After this was NHL 3 on 3. The game was a single contest of 3 NHL players plus 1 goalie per team. All the players had huge heads of their actual selves. The game allows for multiplayer online and offline play. The game is played on a first two basis rather than within a set time limit, meaning there can be near and limited amount of periods per match. Power-ups can be obtained which can give advantages to either team. It was an alright game and I actually really enjoyed it when I played it a bunch. NHL 09 introduced several new features from the previous year's edition of the game. Features such as the defensive skill stick, dump and chase, and the stick lift option played into the advanced user's demographic. The option to play using the NHL 94 controls, however, makes the game easy for even beginners to play. On the PS2 version of NHL 09, there's a Be A Pro mode where you can create a player or use a rookie NHL player and take him to the NHL. NHL 2K11 was released on September 7, 2010. This time, the game was only available on the iPhone and the Nintendo Wii. On March 3, 2010, CEO Ben Fetter explained that we have decided to reevaluate our NHL strategy and will only be releasing NHL 2K11 for the Wii in the fiscal year 2010. On May 5, 2011, 2K Sports confirmed that NHL 2K12 would not be released on any platform, putting the NHL 2K series on hiatus. NHL 14 has overhauls to two game engines, based on other sports titles developed by EA Canada. The collision physics are now powered by the same core technology behind the FIFA Player Impact Engine. And for more realistic fights, the game employs the new Enforcer Engine based on the Fight Night series. In addition, the True Performance Skating Engine got some improvements, and the game has a new deking system. Now, NHL 15 was something else. It was the first release for the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, and introduced the NHL on NBC presentation of the game across all modes in an effort to increase the game's realism. The lead commentary team consisted of Mike Emmerich and Eddie Olchek, with analysts from Ray Ferraro as an ice level analyst. NHL 15's problem was a lack of content. A lot of people's favorite features, like the EASHL from NHL 12, were removed. You can't simulate your B a pro shifts, you can't draft in GM mode, and there's no access to your AHL teams in GM mode either. Online is 1v1 only, no online team plays, and no clubs. Hut mode is of course largely intact, so you still have the option of paying EA to play a game you already paid for. Fans were disappointed, and it showed in reviews and sales. At this point, EA's games really started to feel stale. A lot of the gameplay was very similar from year to year. EA's plan, whether it was a good one or not, was to slowly add more features within each release. NHL 16 did improve on the gameplay compared to NHL 15, and with a revised EASHL, players were back to their favorite 6v6 gameplay moments. One problem consisted though. The BIA Pro and GM mode still lack a lot of the key features, and you can only make custom players after a post-launch patch. Overall, the game continued to feel stale. 
EA looked to come back with the releases of NHL 17 and 18. Many of the key features for GMO were brought back, with the additions like arena upgrades and changing the location of your team. NHL 18 brought back everyone's favorite game mode, NHL 3 on 3, allowing players to enjoy a more party-centric game mode. A lot more key features and other modes were also refined or added. In NHL 19, the world of Chell Player Hub was added, but in my opinion it wasn't what I expected. I was expecting a larger world that players could run around in, very similar to the NBA 2K series. Now, NHL 20 introduced new game modes such as Squad Battles and Hockey Ultimate Team. The game features a new commentary team with James Cebulski as the play-by-play -play announcer and Ray Ferraro as the color commentator. One shocking feature was Snoop Dogg being part of the game in a huge way. He was an unlockable player and even had some voice lines over some of the hockey games. EA announced that NHL 20 would be getting a new shooting engine to reflect signature shots of players such as P.K. Subban and Alexander Ovechkin. NHL 21's big game changer was its Be A Pro mode. It's been expanded to be more interactive and cinematic, similar to other franchises such as Madden NFL and NBA 2K. Players create their custom hockey player and choose to begin their career as a prospect in either the Canadian Hockey League or European Hockey Leagues. Players are able to select their dialogue when speaking to their coach or the hockey press and media scrums. The dialogue options the player selects affect their likability among teammates, management, and their brand. As you can see, there's a lot of hockey video games. And through the years, you can really see the development from pixels to polygons. Even if you think the games have gotten stale within recent years, try not to forget about all the fun you've been having playing as your favorite players on the ice. Thanks for watching.